the end, that's Lincoln Park, Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there's having themselves a great day. Uh, living in the end, or letting go, I should say, with Goddard, and it really is ties into kind of that living into the end concept and all that. There's also some kind of evolution in my understanding of this process, and I did some good research, found some great stuff, found some quotes from Neville to kind of back it up. And uh, also, uh, there is varying degrees to which many of us find ourselves. So, you know, maybe if you're just like an expert up here and you're kind of living in the wish fulfilled, you um, you maybe, you know, don't have to, you know, it's a lot easier for you, right? Maybe. And then we've got other people maybe that are down here and hoping the process works out and really has more of a battle with the doubt stuff. And everybody kind of have been beating this home and people up here and people down here, we're all getting that doubts are not helping us manifest. They're helping us figure out where our blockages are, but they're certainly not helping the manifestation process. So again, a lot of this has to do with dealing with not doubting, which you can't make something go away by focusing on it, right? So it's dealing with keeping our energy good is really what we're trying to accomplish here. So of course you do the asking and then we got to get ourselves to that feel good place. And here's where I think Goddard really gets into what the concept of letting go is and why I do think it's still uh, a very important process uh, when it comes to the whole manifesting thing, right? So just to kind of reiterate, one of the key points to all of this is the I am presence. The I am presence is truly the power of this. And not to get overly religious, maybe keep it a little more on the spiritual level, but we are the creator. The creator is working through us to imagine itself through us. So in that concept, when we invoke I am, we're actually using that creator's power. That is the creator. That's us. That's them through us. We are one and the same. And that's a really important distinction to make. We are the creator. We are one and the same. We're invoking the power of the creator through us. And the creator is experiencing itself through us. We're kind of one and the same and tied together. And I'll have to do another show to try to get into that because that's confusing. Let's not get too terribly far off. But from the standpoint of making this argument simpler for me, the I am presence is profound. It is the creating part of this. It is what's doing the creating. So it's extremely important to come to that understanding. Now, one thing I want to kind of say to back that up is there's a couple good solid quotes here from Neville. So you become for a moment after a successful meditation incapable of continuing the act as though it were a physical creative act. You are just as important after you have prayed successfully as you are after the physical creative act. When satisfaction is yours, you no longer hunger for it. If the hunger persists, you did not explode the idea within you. You did not actually succeed in becoming conscious of being that which you wanted to be. There was still that thirst when you came out of the deep. When you pray... Believe you have received, and you shall receive. When the physical creative act is completed, the sinew which is upon the hollow of the man's thigh shrinks, and man finds himself impotent or halted. In like manner, when a man prays successfully, he believes that he is already that which he desired to be. Therefore, he cannot continue desiring to be that which is already conscious of being. At the moment of satisfaction, physical and psychological, something goes out which in time bears witness to man's creative power. The really important part in there is, in like, in like manner, when a man prays successfully, he believes that he is already that which he desired to be. Therefore, he cannot continue desiring to be that which is already conscious of being. Living in the end when we're truly doing it, if you already have that which you seek, do you continue asking for it? I've already got the million dollars. Do I continue to ask for a million dollars? I've already got my significant person. Do I continue to ask for them? And the asking again is the imaginal work. So a lot of us are like, well, what about living in the end? How does letting go and living in the end work? Well, that's now a little bit better of an understanding, at least in my mind especially, 
that when you're living in the end, you're doing that at the moment of the imaginal work, and you're doing that to make it real, to make the feeling occur, to make all of this actually like alive inside of you, to use those I am muscles, that creative ability within us to create the reality within us, and then that reality is real, period. And that's where the doubt creeps in for a lot of people, but that's where it should technically stop, is once you've lived in the end, once you've made it, once you've made it real within your mind, as within, so without, it becomes real on the out. Now, how long that takes, it doesn't matter. It's already real. It's already a reality. It's already occurring. Now, I think there's a quote in here, and I feel like I'm getting out of order. But really, it comes down to the feelings, right? You're trying to create the feelings, and these feelings come from that living in the end. And once you've created the feeling of, I have this now, it is real within my mind, therefore it is real, I have that feeling of satisfaction. And from that, Neville says, Neville, well, or someone says, Neville didn't visualize to try to change his physical reality. He visualized to create the feeling of having manifested his goal. So again, that's how he gets to that place where he's feeling the satisfaction. He's feeling the reality of it. He's feeling it already. So what they talk about also is the concept, and I know this is very Goddard, is pruning your thoughts. It's about feeling, again, and what feels better to think about in the big picture. But pruning your thoughts is when you start having those thoughts of doubt and things along those lines, you shift your attention to something else. Not to reaffirming your your. Not, not to reaffirming what you're trying to manifest, not to anything that has to do with that. Because if you go back to reaffirming that, only because you had doubts, mind you, especially, but if you go back to a reaffirming that, you are now telling the universe, I don't believe I've created it. So you kind of start back over. If you change your thoughts to something completely different, it still leaves that I've already asked for this. It's already real. And that's just those aspects of things that we need to learn to control our thoughts. That's all that comes down to. It's just practice. Practice at dealing with our thoughts. Practice at focusing them where we need to, when we need to. And that's the power of this whole, like I've told you before, this whole concept of what we're trying to learn here is power over our thoughts for sure. Power to create emotions and feelings within ourselves and then on top of that realizing our true divine nature the i am presence within us is the creator is creating this is making this happen we live in a 3d world so it's going to take moments to come to fruition but it's already created it's already real it's within us we made it real we felt it real it was real it is real from that place, it is created on the outer world. It starts real on the inner side. It gets created on the outer side. When we start doubting on the inner side, it gets doubted on the outer side. That's why we prune our thoughts and we shift them to another direction. So, of course, again, the whole concept of this, of this is really that I am stuff. It's really important. So when you imagine God is acting he is the true vine and the vine dresser, for he is your imagination imagining you. If you really understand this, you will start pruning your thoughts. If you don't, you will persist in allowing your wanton energy to run wild, to swell into irregular twigs, to bear unlovingly things in your world. When we forget that this is reality, this is real because we made it so. When we let go of that and essentially say, I don't believe that, you're essentially cutting that tie with your I am presence and basically making it go. Turning it off. And then you re-ask, try to get to that place of feeling it again, and have to start over. 
The letting go comes into, I already know what's happening. So that is why it's so important. I kind of backtracked on it and did a show on it kind of recently. I gave myself a little wiggle room, I think. But long story short, ultimately, yeah, once you realize you have it, letting go is natural. Not because you want to or feel like you have to. It's because you already know it's real. And when you truly understand, like he's saying in that last quote, when you truly understand, for he is your imagination imagining you. Meaning, he's created you, me, into reality by imagining us, and here we are imagining back to him, or using the same power from within. It's a very cool circle of how you know, in the in the beginning was the word, right? Or uh, I forget the uh, the logos is what they really say, and it could be light. Some people question both, but anyway, I'm getting off track. Long story coming to get one. Well, I've got one last little quote here. Let's just go ahead and say it because I'm I kind of jacked up my order here. Hopefully, this is making sense. We'll see. Letting go is true detachment. There's no worry, fear, or obsession. You trust that it's yours because you know that it is. The evidence is already within you and is in your life. It doesn't matter what the world says. All you have to do is let go by assuming the state of your wish fulfilled. So truly living in the end, truly, and and this is the one that really is where the quotes all come from, from uh, from his writings, is assuming the state of your wish fulfilled. If you're truly, truly, truly doing that, then there really is no reason for the doubt or any of those kinds of things. Now, again, many of us are in different degrees of this. I get that. I've done a lot of other shows. I know a lot of people are going to say, so how do I make that happen? How do I change my mind? How do I? We're going to have to watch some other shows. Because, again, I'm just trying to lay out the, the mechanism here. And I'll probably do some additional shows, maybe peel this apart and try to talk about different parts depending on people's questions. But, again... It's the, it's, once it's real on the inside, it is real on the outside, and it's just taking the 3D world a little bit of time to make it so. But it's already real. You don't ask again once you already have it. If you're asking again, you're admitting you don't have it. You just ask once. Because we don't have it. And this is what I'm telling the user universe I'd like to have. So I imagine I live from the end. I make it real. I feel it real. I see it real. And I'm done. 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 Nothing else to do. Truly. When the thoughts come up, you prune them. That's what the gist of this is. And remembering the I am presence. Because that is us. We are the I am. The I am is us. We are it. It's a circle. We are creator. Creator is us. We are the same. So that power is ours to use. That power is ours to wield. And learning to prune our thoughts on the inside about all things negative. Think of negative thoughts about your neighbor, even though it has nothing to do with getting your specific person. You still want to prune those thoughts because, again, you're not putting that energy out. You're maybe getting yourself into a funky state. How you're feeling matters What you're thinking matters because of where it generally takes us. And knowing that you are living in, you are assuming the state of your wish fulfilled. Powerful stuff. I hope it makes sense to a degree. I hope aspects of it. Maybe this is one of those you might have to listen to it a second time. And I know I tried really hard to kind of get myself organized. But, you know, like I still just flow, right? It's still a a thing. And so, I, you know, sometimes I, I go wherever I go. Uh, and so hopefully it plays back right. I don't know. I, we'll see how it listens, uh, how, how it sounds in the in the end. <laughs> the song we came in with. Going to be going out with a, a great song by U2 called Beautiful Day. It's Dan Radio Style. Friend, to take you out of this place Someone you can lend a hand in return for grace It's a beautiful